Hi, I'm Kathy Wiederholt. I'm the Fruit Project Manager at the Carrington Research Extension Center. I'm here in the Haskap berries. Uh, we've been, we have quite a few here and uh, we've been looking at them since 2007. And uh, let me tell you a little bit about them. There's really three kinds of Haskaps, really more like two, but uh, there's three kinds. There's the Russian kinds, which were first brought to the United States and they're called honeyberries. And then there are the Canadian varieties, which are a kind of a cross between two different kinds of Russian varieties. And they are incorporating some Japanese heritage in there. And that leads me to the third variety, which are the Japanese Haskaps. So we really like the Japanese Haskaps. The Russians tend to be a little bitter. The Canadian ones have not produced well for us, but they were the very first releases from the university. And they, their new releases should be much better because they are incorporating the Japanese material in there. So what I really want to talk to you about is the Japanese varieties here. They are more upright. They are as hardy as anything else, all hardy to about zone two. And they can produce more fruit for us. We're not exactly sure why, but they definitely produce more fruit. They bloom about 10 to 12 or 10 to 14 days uh, later than the other varieties. So it may give them a chance to have more natural pollinators, um, but they produce a, a large fruit. And uh, like I said, the plants grow more upright. So we're hoping that this is more conducive to mechanical harvesting. Right now, it's pretty hard to mechanical harvest any of the Haskaps. The uh, Canadian ones, original Canadian ones grow kind of low, and then the uh, uh, Russian ones are kind of a tight shrub. So uh, we're working on it, we're working on it. And that's what this, this project is for, to see what would be best for North Dakota. Uh, we have one little issue in North Dakota that is a slight problem for Haskaps, and that is our famous wind. It's very windy, it shakes the fruit, and the fruit tends to fall off as it ripens. And it doesn't help that these fruit, these plants tend to bloom for about two weeks, so they kind of have an, ex they have an extended ripening period. So that is the problem. We have fruit that falls and then um, this uneven ripen ripening. Um, the research center has a grant for this project through the Specialty Crop Black Block Grant Project. And we are trying to look for varieties that will do better in North Dakota. I've been working with the US breeder out in Oregon, Dr. Maxine Thompson. And I've been working with her for almost uh, seven or eight years now. We actually have some of her plants from 2007, but I've been able to visit her orchard and select plants that might do better here. I look for plants where the fruit is more medium sized, the fruit clings a little better, and then I would like to have fruit that uh, all ripens more, more evenly. So this is what our grant is for, is to look for these, look for these plants. We are probably getting to over a hundred we have probably more than a hundred plants here in the orchard, but the different varieties we have, we probably have about 25 or 30 varieties, different, different Japanese Haskaps. Uh, none of them have names, they're all breeding numbers. So we're just looking at all the qualities they have and seeing how they do here in North Dakota. Uh, for homeowners, I would say look for the Canadian varieties because that's the best chances or it's the, really some of the only uh, selections that you have. And the new varieties, there's Borealis uh, and Tundra, those were the originals. And uh, let me say the new varieties should do better. It is Boreal Beast, Beauty and Blizzard. And those should do pretty well here, have big fruit uh, and more upright plants. Uh, you need two varieties to have fruit. They have to cross-pollinate like apples do. And uh, they'll, all ha they'll each have slightly different fruit from each other, but they should be delicious. The fruit is tender. It's really good in jam. It's really good in um, ice cream. We have just had some last night. And I have to say that the winemakers in North Dakota love Haskap. It makes such a rich and full flavored wine. It's, it's just really delicious. And uh, if you have a chance to grow them, I would encourage you 
to do so and also uh, to let you know that you must net them. The birds will take your fruit the instant it turns just a little bit blue. You'll never see a blue fruit and you'll think your, your plants never have fruit, but that's not true. It's the birds taking them at 4.30 in the morning. So try some Hascap plants and remember to net them. Uh, just average soil will do well for you and uh, it's a very nice fruit. I encourage you to try them. Thank you. Thank you.